Dr. Bowen back here with you for another session of Microbiology Boot Camp. Our topic today is going to be Corinobacterium diphtheriae, the causative agent of diphtheria. Now, this is not common in the U.S. because we vaccinate for this, and we've been vaccinating for it for a very long time. And because we have some degree of herd immunity, even people who are not vaccinated are unlikely to get it. So on the exam, if you're given a vignette that the answer is going to be diphtheria, you will probably be told, you almost certainly be told, that this is a patient who did not get childhood vaccinations or it's an immigrant. And any time you're given that, your mind should immediately go to any of the diseases that we vaccinate for. Measles, mumps, rubella, diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, uh, haemophilus influenza type B, and so forth. So keep that in mind for your exam. All right, let's get started. But before we do, I just want to plug my Patreon here. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please consider chipping in a dollar a month. A little bit goes a long way to help keep these videos free and coming. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe to my page or patronize my advertisers by, cl by clicking on the ads. All of that is very much appreciated. Thank you very much in advance. All right, so here is our gram positive versus gram negative cell wall. You should be familiar with this. All of this is very testable. Uh, even though it's not terribly clinically relevant, USMLE Step 1 is a basic science test, and so you're going to be given questions like this on the exam. They may give you, you know, say it's a, give you a vignette of a disease. You know it's a gram-positive organism, and they'll ask you something about the cell wall. It could be something like that. So kind of a pain in the butt, but that's how Step 1 works. You should be familiar with the gram stain process as well. So we'll work through our algorithm. This is the last of the gram positive rods. So we're getting towards the end of our gram positive organisms. We'll talk about the characteristics. There's some buzzwords that you'll want to remember. It's uh, You don't need to know the details of them, but you need to know the words because they might give you one of those and uh, and you'll need to just know that, or it might be one of the answer choices. They may ask you how you differentiate C. diphtheriae from the other gram-positive rods, uh, so you'll want to be familiar with these things. So we'll talk about the disease, diphtheria, or better called diphtheric croup, which is the only way that diphtheria is going to come up on your exam, and then we'll finish with the story. So here are our gram-positive organisms with the gram-positive bacilli blown up here. And we are on this very last one, C. diphtheriae. All right, so C. diphtheriae is a gram-positive bacilli commonly described as club-shaped. You can see here it's club-shaped. And actually the word Corinobacterium comes from club-shaped bacteria. It is aerobic or facultative anaerobic depending on the conditions. You should know that as far as your gram-positive rods go, the only or the only obligate anaerobes are the clostridium species. It does have an exotoxin, diphtheria toxin. You need to be familiar with how that works. It has metachromatic granules. You don't need to know what those are. You just need to know that it has them. And you can see them when you stain it either on this, what's called an Elbert stain, which will stain it sort of a green and purple, or you may even see it on the Gram stain. Uh, but this Elbert stain really highlights the metachromatic granules. You should know that it grows on telluride agar or Loeffler media. You don't need to know what those things are, you just need to know that it grows on those things. Telluride agar and Loeffler media. And then there's a test you can do called an ELEC test. And an ELEC test points to a toxigenic strain of diphtheria. So not all diphtheriae are toxigenic. Not all of them can form a toxin. Okay, here is our telluride agar, and it forms black colonies. So black colonies on telluride agar for diphtheria. Here is that Elbert stain blown up a little bit better. So you can see the club-shaped organisms, and uh, the granules are up here. They stain a blackish purple, and then the rest of the rod stains green. This is often described as appearing like Chinese characters, 
Uh, I don't know if you if you know Chinese, probably uh, gonna say they don't really look like Chinese characters, but uh, that's how it gets described. I doubt that will come up on the exam, but you hear that thrown around. They like to form these sort of angles here. Okay, so the main virulence factor is its capability of being infected with a phage, and that prophage infects a non-toxigenic strain of diphtheria and turns it toxigenic. So the phage carries the gene responsible for the diphtheria toxin, inserts its genome into the bacteria, into the cell, and then that gets incorporated into the genome and now it's, now it's capable of forming the toxin that causes the disease. The toxin is diphtheria toxin. You've got to know how it works. So it works by ribosylating elongation factor 2. And remember that elongation factor 2 is responsible for translocating the tRNA and elongating the polypeptide strand uh, during translation of mRNA, so for protein synthesis. If you ribosylate EF2, then it blocks protein synthesis and the cell will die. So ADP ribosylation of EF2. Got to know that for the exam. The diseases caused by C. diphtheriae is diphtheria. And when we say diphtheria, we're referring to diphtheric croup. There are cutaneous diseases that C. diphtheria can cause, usually associated with dirty needles, heroin use, but that is not going to come up on the exam. The only way diphtheria is going to come up on the exam is the upper respiratory tract disease. So this looks a lot like croup as far as clinical presentation. Remember, croup is caused by parainfluenza virus, but this, even though it looks like croup, what you're going to see is this characteristic grayish-yellow pseudomembrane, and that's a dead giveaway for diphtheria. The other symptoms are, like I said, very similar to croup. Pharyngitis, lymphadenopathy, uh, neck swelling, cough, dy dyspnea, and sore throat. Complications include respiratory distress, myocarditis, and demyelination. You probably won't get asked those on the exam, but respiratory distress uh, can happen just because of the cough and the swelling. Now, you may be given on the exam a, a vignette. Maybe the patient came in with a cough and sore throat, and they tested negative for strep and they uh, were given an antibiotic for whatever reason and then they come back two days later and they're having major respiratory distress. That would be pretty classic, especially if you don't catch the pseudomembrane. This can be easily confused with croup or with strep throat. Diagnosis, we already talked about all these. Positive ELEC test, growth on selective agar, or the metachromatic granules. All of those things are very specific for C. diphtheriae. The treatment is penicillin and antitoxin. So we give the antitoxin to neutralize the toxin that's already causing disease, and we give the penicillin to kill off any bacteria that can then make toxin. So you have to do both, antibiotic plus antitoxin. And we prevent diphtheria, diphtheria by administering routinely the DTaP vaccine, which is given in early childhood or infancy. So the DTaP vaccine, that's diphtheria and tetanus, which are toxoids, and acellular pertussis. This is an example of the bull neck that you see uh, characteristically with diphtheria. So there's a mnemonic that you can use to help you remember the symptoms of and characteristics of C. diphtheria. A for ADP ribosylation, ADP ribosylation of EF2. B for the beta prophage that confers upon it its toxigenic potential. CD for Cornobacterium diphtheriae. EF for elongation factor. And G for granules, the metachromatic granules. Welcome to Corinth. Corinth was a Greek city that was founded in antiquity and later became part of the Roman Empire and is now the location of a lot of ruins. And here we have a tourist trap where people are invited to come and stare at the stars through a telescope. And so 
Here we have our purple snake, who is our recurring symbol for gram-positive rods. C. diphtheria is a gram-positive rod. And here is our Roman here that is running the tourist site. And this guy is bringing his girlfriend to Corinth to stare at the stars. And notice that they are lovers. And he is carrying a club. And that's because C. diphtheria is club-shaped. She's wearing a polka dot dress. And that's to remind you that this bacteria displays metachromatic granules. And they're yellow and green on Albert Stain. Because they're lovers, it will remind you that it grows on Leffler's medium. And here we have an animal who decided to come and take part in the stargazing. And what kind of animal is this? This is an elk. And notice he's got this greenish glow to him. And the greenish glow is toxic, and it's looking for the toxin. ELK stands for ELEC, and the ELEC test will be positive when the C. diphtheria strain uh, is capable of toxigenicity. The black telescope here for looking at the stars is for telluride medium. Telescope, telluride. Telluride medium grows black colonies, black like the telescope. So here you see a sign saying Corinth, entrance free to lovers all day pass. Entrance free to lovers is EF2, elongation factor 2. All day pass is ADP. ADP ribosylation of EF2 is how the diphtheria toxin works. And our Roman here is draped with a gray tunic. And that's to remind you that diphtheria includes a pseudomembrane, a gray pseudomembrane, which forms on the pharynx. And what is the constellation that the telescope is pointed at? It's the constellation of Taurus, which is a bull. And that's to remind you that diphtheria is associated with a bull neck, a swelling of the neck, along with cervical lymphadenopathy. Notice that our lovers here are kissing each other, and there's these little hearts coming off as they're in love. The heart will remind you that diphtheria can cause myocarditis and arrhythmia. And here we've got a guy that is not feeling too well after his trip to Corinth and he's sneezing and coughing and that will help you remember that this is spread by respiratory droplets and it also causes a croup-like cough. And now, after all this stargazing, we have this UFO that decided to show up. And the UFO has these purple pencil antennas to remind you that penicillin is the treatment, along with this antibody, which is for antitoxin, because that's really what antitoxins are, are antibodies that bind the toxin. So the treatment is penicillin plus antitoxin. And we see a syringe here, and that is to remind you that this can be pre prevented by vaccination through the DTaP vaccine.